Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Crypto Somniac here to bring you everything crypto related where the rich never sleep, baby. What do we got going on today? We got we got our first crypto beef. We got Suppo Man and Brandon Kelly duking it out on YouTube, man. This is the first crypto beef that I've heard about. So um, interesting, interesting stuff going on. I think uh, I just want to be here to provide you guys with the best knowledge that I can provide as far as crypto goes. I think both of those guys have their own styles. They have um, different information to provide you guys. I think you should just try to get your hands on as much information in the crypto space as possible. And don't just go off one guy's opinions and views when it comes to investing your hard earned cash because you don't know who's right nobody's nobody knows what's gonna happen in the market everybody's got their own opinions and I think it's your job to research and get your hands on as much tools and information as you can and just make the best decisions from from what you see going on in the market I think like I said both of them have their own different styles in trading and they both provide information on the market that is valuable they don't have uh, the same opinions and I think there's there's a lot of great guys that you can look out there for and get information on a lot of different charts a lot of websites and yeah like I said I think it's it's your job to really stay on top of the market and stay informed and ultimately you know you decide what you want to do with your money no one's telling you to do uh, one thing or the other I think it's great that we have this community that's new and we have uh, all these tools and different resources that technologically savvy people are able to access. It's a, it's a lovely market, guys. We have things like Reddit and Steemit and YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. You know, this stuff didn't exist five, ten years ago. So it's really, it's really awesome to have all this at our fingertips. So that's really all I want to say about that. I want to talk today about. Uh, something that I think you guys should be aware of. I think the difference between cryptocurrencies, currencies, platforms, and digital assets. So what I'd like to go over next is the different type of cryptocurrency classifications there are. So similar to the stock market again, uh, there are, say you have stocks, you have bonds, you have options, you have different types of these classifications and things you can invest in, though they're all you're able to make money investing in all of them. So similarly, in the crypto world, you have currencies, you have platforms, and you have assets. And while they all can work to help you make money, they are a little bit different. And I just want to go briefly touch on what each of them are because they, again, are different. So most commonly and most uh, at the basic level, you have what is a currency. And currencies are issued on a blockchain. Uh, they all are issued on a blockchain uh, and typically with a cryptocurrency or a currency you'll have full control over your money you'll be able to get the set of keys and you are in full control of your money or your wallet or at least you have the ability to if you want to store your money in something uh, like an offline wallet or a cold storage wallet you have that ability to have the protection over your money uh, which works a little bit differently than an asset uh, additionally, cryptocurrencies or currencies usually have a set amount of circulating supply. They usually have, uh, for example, in Bitcoin, I think the limit's 21 billion coins. We've uh, currently we're at about 16 billion, I believe. Uh, but there's usually this set limit, and uh, the more a currency is used, and the more in demand it is, the more you'll see its value increase over time, and that set limit also can affect its price because there are only so many in supply. Um, the less that there are, generally speaking, the, the more the price is going to be per coin uh, because you have, you know, the less you have, the more the coin is going to cost. And to go over just some of the most common currencies, because there are a lot, we have Bitcoin, which is a currency. We have Litecoin, which is a currency. We have Dash. We have Monero. We have Zcash. In fact, if you just click this, well, it's going to tell you that everything is as a cryptocurrency. It'll work a little bit different on the assets tab, but not all of these. Ethereum is not a and not a currency, nor is Ethereum Classic, nor is BitShares or BitConnect, nor is AntShares. 
Uh, some of these are digital assets and some of them are actually platforms. Now I'm going to jump ahead and I want to talk about assets. Now asset, assets can be issued on a digital ledger or virtually any other type of medium. They don't have to be issued on a blockchain. Additionally, they are protected by sort of these overarching entities or companies. You don't necessarily have full control over, over your asset as you would in a currency. And in theory, in theory, they can actually be created indefinitely. There doesn't need to be a set supply like there does in a currency. Uh, also, the value of a digital asset is, is sort of derived from the organization it's linked to. So generally speaking, the, uh, the, the increase in value that you see in a digital asset comes from sort of the perceived value of the company. The more you believe in the company and the more the more people that are behind it and sort of the reputation it brings along with it sort of it is what directly affects the price of the asset. Uh, so to go over what some of those are, you have a number here uh, of them that you can sort on CoinMarketCap. Uh, EOS, for Tasium, Tether, which is, eh, that's an interesting one. I'll have to cover te te Tether in a different video. You have Genosis, Golem, Economy, Augur. You have all these different digital assets and they are not the same as a currency. And these digital assets are stored on a platform. And let's go over platforms. So platforms basically store all these digital assets. They are typically, digital assets are typically built on these platforms. And some of them, or all of these digital assets, are essentially just decentralized apps, or what we call dApps. And I guess platforms are a little bit more complex than say a currency or an asset because they basically have to support all these assets that are built, all these interesting projects that are built on these platforms. They have to be held somewhere, they have to be stored, and they're stored on these platforms. Now Ethereum is probably the most common uh, platform that we have heard about out there. It stores uh, a number of different digital assets. Now Ethereum isn't the only one out there. If you come over to this tab again, you can see the different platforms that there are. We have Omni, we have Ethereum, NXT, we have Waves, uh, Counterparty. Uh, there aren't a ton of platforms because they, they are a little bit more complex in nature. Uh, EOS is actually interesting. EOS is basically a platform on a platform right now. Uh, it's being uh, issued on the Ethereum blockchain, but it's it's actually it's an ICO stage right now and it's being um, it's eventually going to be its own platform it's just being uh, the tokens are being distributed right now on the ethereum blockchain ant shares would also be another popular platform that's uh, it's being quote unquote called the ethereum killer it is basically another platform that plans to be able to hold other digital assets on it so I hope that kind of makes sense that we have the different classifications here. Again, money can be made from all of them. Uh, value can go up or down. Um, just sort of try to think about it like bonds and stocks and options. You have these different different types of things that you can invest in in the crypto market. And they all have similarities, but just keep in mind that they are different. Um, Additionally, I just want to touch real quick on the market right now and what it's going on. We have a lot of blood in the streets and there is money to be made during this time. You can, you could have pulled out of the market like I had suggested earlier. You could have resorted into some altcoins. You could have hedged your, your funds into Tether. You could have went back to fiat and now is a great time to buy. The market has... Um, really reconsolidated. I don't necessarily think that this is the end. I would like to see where the market kind of pulls off. I think we had some support here in this 70, 75, 77, 78 billion dollar market uh, range. And I think we could see pullback into that area. Uh, we, we don't really have a set, we don't really have a, a support level here that we are, are falling back on. We've, we've touched the 90 billion and we touched it there again and then just today we broke past that and we we sunk down to 80 billion and I'm not sure where the bottom is I think based on a lot of charts I've been reading I think Bitcoin uh, and the market will will take a little bit more of a hit I think Bitcoin's going to fall down below the $2,000 mark before we see the end of this descent I think Ethereum will drop below the $200 mark I think uh, the market cap could sink to 
70 to 75 billion. I think we are not near the end. Uh, we aren't at the end of this crash. But I think in general, I don't think now is a bad time to buy. I think we are we are near the bottom. I don't necessarily think we're at the bottom yet, but we're close. No one can predict the bottom. I think you should watch and get your hands on as much information uh, as you possibly can out there. I think uh, there's a lot of cool charts on TradingView that suggest that 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 this may not be the the last of um, the last of the downfall, the end of the bear market. I think there's going to be a lot of uncertainty again till SegWit happens on August 1st. I think you're going to have an opportunity to stockpile some of these coins, get your hands on some of some some of these things that are cheap right now. Uh, I would personally maybe hold off for another week or two. I don't think we are at the end of the the bear movement, but if if you're a long-term investor, I don't think there is a bad time to buy. So anyway, thank you for watching my video. Please like subscribe to this video share it with as many people as you can and please ask questions guys I really I want to help uh, ignore, I want to help educate you guys I want to help spread the knowledge I want all of us to make money so please leave your comments I'll be happy to make videos on questions that you guys have I'll be happy to answer your questions uh, on a individual one-on-one -on -one basis and please give this thing a thumbs up and I look forward to talking to you guys soon